Hi, I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my website, Global Math Institute and the YouTube channel. In this video, we'll understand what is ratio and how is proportion related to ratio. We are going to solve some word problems using the concept of ratio and proportion. So in short, these are the topics which we are going to cover. We'll appreciate the relation between ratio and proportion. We'll understand the concept of ratios with examples. So I'm going to take many examples in this case. These examples will be followed by multiple choice quiz. So this quiz is distributed all over the place. We have 35 questions in all. The activities which we are referring to as explore activities are for you to perform. So we actually have two activities which you need to uh, kind of extended application of what we are learning and they will help you to understand the topics better. Then we'll take up some equations which are basically ratios on both the sides and these are called proportions and see how to solve these equations. Again, some multiple choice questions. Then we'll consider ratio with three terms and then I'll introduce you to some strategies which will help you to solve the ratio related problems very easily. Now these strategies are going to help you to minimize the time in answering questions. So we'll talk about strategies as in when we get the opportunity and our focus all along will be on the word problems. So I hope that's this makes it very interesting and useful. In between, feel free to pause the video, answer the questions whenever you get an opportunity, and then look into my suggestions. So let's begin with the very first concept, which is relation between ratio and proportion. It is important to note that ratio is a comparison of two or more numbers. And proportion is an equation that shows two equivalent ratios. So as written here, the basic concept is that if we have six oranges and eight apples, let's say we have six oranges and eight apples, then the ratio of oranges to apples is six is to eight. Or we can also write this as a fraction, six over eight, right? Now, 6 over 8 is equivalent to 3 over 4. You can divide both numerator and denominator to get 3 over 4. Now, when you write it in this form, which is kind of an equation with equal to sign in between 6 over 8 equals to 3 over 4, it becomes proportion. So that is how ratio is related with proportion. Now, its application is that you would actually have in general some number a over b and this could be equated as another number c over d. Now once you have an equation relating to ratios, we could solve such equations if something is unknown by cross multiplication. So when you cross multiply, the result will be a times d equals to b times c. Now this particular equation which I have written here is very important and useful. We are going to use this concept in solving word problems relating ratios. Is this application clear, right? Keeping this in mind, we'll first take a few examples and then jump into a quiz. So based on the foundation for ratios and proportion, here is a question for you. So in our question, we'll keep this term kind of common for many questions, which is ratio of oranges to apples in a fruit basket is 6 is to 8. Convert this ratio in simplified form. So we are comparing two things. We are saying oranges, let's say O, 
two apples, right? Oranges two apples. And this is written as equal to six is to eight. Now when I say simplified form, treat it like fractions. So what you would do is you could divide both by two and you can write this as three is to four. Does it make sense to you? So that becomes the simplified form of the given ratio. Question number two here is find the ratio of apples to fruits in the basket. Now see, in the basket we have oranges and apples. So how many fruits are there? So let's calculate the number of fruits. Right. So we'll do the calculation here. Fruits will be equal to apples, let's say A, plus oranges. Right. So apples we have 8 and oranges are 6. So when you add them, we get 14. Now the question is, find the ratio of apples to fruits, right? So, so we are looking for a ratio of apples to fruits. Let's say fruits are F, right? So this is fruits, which we will consider as a variable F. Now apples to fruits in this case will be number of apples 8 and fruits are 14. So that is how you could write this ratio 8 is to 14. You could also simplify this as we did in the previous case. Instead of 8 is to 14, we could divide them both by 2. And we can write this as 4 is to 7. So both are correct. Question number 3 here is, can the basket have 24 fruits? Think over it. We are saying the basket is having 14 fruits if there are 6 and 8 apples and oranges, right? In the simplified form, we also saw that the basket could have three oranges and four apples. So this is a fixed ratio, you understanding, right? So if I have more oranges, the number of apples will proportionally increase. So in that case, what is the total? Total is 7. So can the basket have 24 fruits? What could be your answer? Of course not. No. The number of fruits in the basket are multiples of 7. Do you understand this part? So what we have here is multiples of 7. We cannot have 24 fruits in the basket, right? So, so the answer is no. We can only have multiples of 7. So we get 7 multiples. We can write 7 n. n could be any number, any natural number, where n equals to 1, 2, and so on. Okay. So it is multiples of 7, and that is a very important concept. With this, let's move forward and answer more questions. Now these are also based on building a foundation for ratio and proportion. We will answer the questions based on the same concept and that is we are considering the situation where the ratio of oranges to apples in a fruit basket is 6 is to 8. Right. Question number 4 here is Number of fruits in the basket is close to 50. Find the possible number. Question number 5. Find the number of apples if the basket has 24 oranges. Question number 6. Find the number of oranges if the basket has 42 fruits. Now I'd like you to pause the video, answer these questions. Question number 4. The number of fruits in the basket is close to 50 find possible number. So we know that the number of fruits are in the case of this basket are multiples of 7. So what multiple of 7 is close to 50? 
49, right? So 49 is your answer. Since we get 7 times 7 as the number, right? So which is 7 times 7. So 49 becomes the answer for question number 4. Question number 5. Find the number of apples if the basket has 24 oranges. Now the ratio is 6 is to 8. So what is the total? Total is 14. Now when we have 24 oranges, well this is, uh, let me write down the numbers on the top, this is oranges to apples and that is the total. So it's a good idea to write this in simplified form, that really helps. So we have 3 is to 4 is to 7 and that is how we got multiples of 7 as the total number of fruits in the basket. Now, we are saying that the number of apples, find the number of apples. We need to find this if the basket has 24 oranges, if we know that this number is 24. Now, how do you get 24 out of 3? You can get 24 from 3 if you times that number by 8. So, 8 times 3 is 24. So, you have to do similar thing to all the numbers. 8 times 4 is 32. And therefore, our answer in this particular case, find the number of apples. Apples in this particular case will be 32. So, our answer is number of apples equals to 32. Is that clear to you? Right. So, that is how the question should be solved. The next question here is, find the number of oranges if the basket has 42 fruits. So now, it is always better to work with the simplified form, which is this, right? So we'll work with the simplified form that the basket really has three oranges, four apples, and the total of seven, right? So what we are writing here is basically, we are writing number of oranges, number of apples and total in simplified form. So this is the simplified form. Is that clear to you? This simplified form will help you answer the questions better. Now the question says that find the number of oranges if the basket has 20, 42 fruits. So, the total here is 42. How do we get 42? From 7, if I multiply by 6, we get 42. So, that means I have to multiply the other numbers also by 6. We are interested in finding the number of oranges. So, I will multiply this by 6. 6 times 3 is 18. And so, our answer in this case will be 18. Perfect. So, we get our answer and this is 18 oranges. Clear? So, that is how we are going to answer such questions based on ratios. Now, here is a very important exercise for you to explore. Ratio of oranges to apples in a fruit basket is 6 is to 8. Will the ratio of oranges to apples change if same number of fruits are added or taken away from the basket? Explain with example. You could actually take two cases. Case 1 could be if two oranges and two apples are added, then the ratio of oranges to apples will increase, decrease or remain same. And case 2 can be if two oranges and two apples are removed, then the ratio of oranges to apples will increase, decrease or remain same. So once you analyze this situation, you can form a strategy and this strategy can really help you answer these tricky questions in a multiple choice test paper. So I'd like you to 
explore and then come out with your solution let's move on with our question number seven question number seven it is also related to ratios it says ratio of oranges to apples in a fruit basket is 8 is to 10 so we have changed our ratio to 8 is to 10 ratio of apples to oranges in this basket is what okay so what we've written here is the ratio of oranges to apples we are saying oranges to apples is 8 is to 10 and the question here is ratio of apples to oranges so when you write it in the reverse way which is if you want to write apples to oranges then you flip this and you could write this as 10 is to 8 is that clear to you so it could be written in either way so we could describe ratio in terms of oranges to apples or apples to oranges but what do you notice here is that our answer doesn't really match since these answers are given in terms of 4 and 5, we need to simplify this. So I could write this as dividing by 2, 5 is to 4, and that could be written in fractions as 5 over 4. Option A matches. You see how easily we can get our answer. So that is how you have to answer such questions. Let's move on and take the next question now. Now we'll talk about equivalent ratios. So what we simplified form was an equivalent ratio. Perfect. We'll continue with similar case, which is ratio of oranges to apples in a fruit basket is 8 is to 10. So we are writing oranges to apples, 8 is to 10. Question here is, find the number of oranges if the basket has 35 apples. Now, as we figure it out, it's better to write this in a simplified form. So when I say 8 is to 10, I could actually divide by 2 and write this as 4 is to 5. And we are saying this is oranges to apples. And the total here will be how much? In this case, it is 18. And in this case, it is 9. Find the number of oranges if the basket has 35 apples. So we have 35 apples. So these are apples which are given to us as 35. How do you get 35? You get 35, sorry. Multiplying by 7, it is 35, not 37 as I have written, 35. So multiplying by 7, you get 35, same number. 7 should multiply all the numbers here. 7 times 4 is 28, and therefore the answer is 28, which is option C for us. Is that clear to you? Correct. Question 9. Find the number of oranges if the basket has 27 fruits. Now we're talking about fruits, right? So the ratio was 4 is to 5 is to 9. And this number 9, which is total, is 27. So you get 27 by multiplying everything by 3. So that will give us 12 and 15, right? We are interested in finding the number of oranges, which is the first number, 12. So that is how you have to answer questions based on ratios. Question number 10 now. If 4 by 9 of students in a school are boys, what is the ratio of girls to boys? I'd like you to pause the video and answer this question. All the multiple choice questions are part of our quiz. I treat this as a quiz. So he's saying, if 4 over 9, 4 over 9 of the students in the school are boys, so these are the number of boys, right? So that is boys. And what are these? These are students. Correct. So how many girls are there? Girls will be, you have to take away from total number of students, number of boys, right? So you have to do 9 take away 4. And that gives you the number of girls. 
which is 5. Now the question is, what is the ratio of girls to boys? So now the ratio of girls to boys, we could write this always as a fraction, is there are 5 girls and 4 boys. So 5 over 4 is the right option, which is option C. Okay. Let's move on and take question number 11. Anil and Ben share $42 in the ratio of 3 to 4. How much money will Anil get? You can pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my solution. Right? So Anil and Ben, and that is the total. Let me write T. The ratio is 3 to 4. So 3 is to 4. When you combine, you get 7. In this particular case, oh, we know that the total amount is 42. Now, how do you get 42 from 7? You need to multiply this by 6. So, multiply all the numbers by 6. 6 times 3 is 18. 4 is 24. And you can confirm that this is actually 42. How much money will Anil get? Right. So, Anil will get... 18 so 18 becomes our answer which is option a perfect now let's take more questions now we'll talk about solving equations now whenever we have equations we are talking about proportions so the the important thing here is that proportions so as you were told right in the very beginning Proportion is equations with ratio. So we have a ratio here equals to another ratio. And this is what we are calling as proportion. Is that clear to you? Right. To solve equations where ratios are related or equations which are called proportions we'll first write them as fractions so write them as fractions that is the first step and then we'll do cross multiplication so these are the two steps which will be followed to answer these questions so let's begin with writing our equations as fractions first the very first one is 7 is to x equals to 4 is to 8 that is to say 7 over x equals to 4 over 8 right. that is what it is so when we cross multiply we could write this as let me write implies we'll multiply 7 and 8 so we'll do 7 into 8 and that should be equal to 4x is that clear to you so when you have 7 into 8 equals to 4x you can simplify for x and you can write 7 times let me write dot here 8 over 4 equals to x and that should give you the value of x so this can be simplified when you divide this by 4 it goes 2 times and therefore the answer will be 7 times 2 which is 14 perfect so we get our answer which is 14 and we can write this as here x equals to 14 now this is one way of doing it now the alternate way here is also to look into the ratio so this is the general way of doing it the alternate way is from 4 to 8 what are we doing so if you look at the number 4 and 8 itself the ratio is 1 is to 2 do you understand so this ratio is 1 is to 2 so that means x is twice 7 so x is twice 
7 or we can say which is 14 is that clear to you so without using equations also we can solve the same thing so you can adopt any of these two methods to solve so the third strategy which is a very important strategy to mention here is apply ratios so in most of the cases applying ratios will be our strategy as you can see the ratio of 1 is to 2 where x is twice 7 equals to 14 is a much better way to do it perfect so we'll try to solve the equations with the strategy of applying ratios now let's solve the next question using the strategy of ratios 3 is to 4 is 9 is to what now in this case if I'm going from 3 to 9 3 to 9 in that case I am multiplying each number by 3 so it is times 3 correct so 4 to what so if I have to get number x it is 4 times 3 which is equal to 12 and so we know that the value of x is 12 so we can say x equals to 12 is that clear to you so that is how easily we can answer without getting into the equations and cross multiplication so here we can make a note fractions to cross multiplication for difficult situations we'll have some examples where it won't be so simple and apply ratios in the way we did here for most cases perfect this is what we are going to call as our strategy right the next one here is x is to 15 and 3 is to 9 so when I say 3 is to 9 basically this ratio can be written as 1 is to 3 so that means from 15 if I want to get x x should be equal to 15 divided by 3 which is 5 so we could get our answer doing a reverse calculation right so in this particular case the strategy was reverse calculation using ratios itself the last question here question number 15 is 16 to 10 is x to what now in this particular case we can rewrite 16 to 10 in a simplified form 16 to 10 can be written as dividing both by 2 we get we have 16 to 10 we could write this as 8 to 5 now it becomes simpler we are saying 8 to 5 is equal to x to 25 so what are you multiplying this by that means we are looking for times 5 right so 8 times 5 is 40 so it is 40 to 25 correct so x is equal to 40 is that clear to you so we got our answer x equals to 40 in this particular case so solving these four questions we have adopted four different strategies I would like you to apply such strategies to solve questions as we move along apply the best strategy as per the situation here are another set of four questions for you we have already written it in the fraction form now you need to find the solution now let us see how we can do them efficiently 
x over e. So first question here is x over 8 equals to 7 over 14. So let's simplify this. 7 over 14 is 1 over 2. All right. So the ratio is 1 over 2. That means x is half of the denominator. So in, in that case, we could write also x is 8 over 2, which is 4. So you could think as if you are doing a cross multiplication. You take this 8 here and cross multiply. So 8 over 2 is 4. And we get our solution, which is, in this case, x equals to 4. Does it make sense to you? You could also check the solution. So when you want to check it, you get 4 over 8, and that is indeed equal to half. Is it clear to you? So at times, it may be required, but it is not a must. Next question here is 6 over 15 is 9 over x. So simple way of cross multiplication actually helps. So we could cross multiply and write x as equal to, taking x over there, 6 times x as equals to 9 times 15. Or that gives you x is equal to 9 times 15 over 6. So let's simplify this. Dividing by 3, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, we get our answer. Right? So you could cross multiply and then find your answer. Is that clear to you? Right? So you do get answer in fractions 45 over 2 and which is 22 and a half. So in such cases where the answers are like fractions or decimals, cross multiplication helps. Right? Now here the next question is 52 over x is 4 over 3. So we can straight away also write this as x is equal to. So we are trying to cross multiply, right? So we interchange the place. So we get 52 over 4 times 3. Do you see how we got it? So what we did was that we took x to this place and brought 3 over 4 on the other side as 4 over as 3 over 4 right 4 over 3 as 3 over 4 and got our answer so we can actually simplify this that goes 13 times and the answer here will be 13 times 3 which is 39 so i encourage you to practice so these are for you to practice the last question here let's do it together We'll cross multiply. So we could also write this as 15. So I'll write dot for multiplication times 12 is 18x. So x will be bringing 18 down there. So we get 15 over 18 times 12 equals to x. And now let's simplify this. You can divide this by 6. It goes 3 times. That goes 2 times. And 3 and 15, 5 times. So the answer clearly is x is equal to 5 times 2, which is 10. So answer for question number 19 is 10 for us. Question number 18, we got answer as 39. For question number 17, we got answer as 22.5. And for question number 16, the answer was 4. So I'd like you to do these questions once again as a practice and then check with the solutions. So let's move on and take question number 20 and 21. Ratio to simplify and then solve. So we are using the strategy first to simplify the ratio and then solve. So we have 27 is to x equals to 18 to 26. So if I simplify, we could write this as... 27 is to x is equal to 
both can be divided by 2 so we get 9 is to 13 now here you notice that we want to find what x is if I move from 27 to 9 I have to divide by 3 correct the idea is to get x so you think like this if I want to get 27 I have to multiply by 3 so using this strategy we will actually times 13 by 3 to get x and clearly now x is equal to 13 times 3 it is a bigger number right so times 3 which is let me write this in brackets 39 is that clear to you so we could use ratios very effectively to quickly get our answer to difficult questions also so this strategy which most of the time you're going to follow is to simplify the ratio and then solve is that clear to you so let's apply this strategy once again so here we'll simplify and rewrite this 12 is to 8 both can be divided by 4 so we get 3 is to 4 equals to 15 is to x now how do I get 15 I get 15 when I do times 5 so let's do times 5 to 4 to get x so x is equal to 4 times 5 which is 20 is it clear to you so this page is very important to understand the strategy so the strategy here is is to simplify ratios and then and then you find the scale factor right so so that gives you a scale factor so the number by which we had been multiplying which is 3 here and 5 here this number is called the scale factor is that clear to you so we'll actually find a scale factor to answer our questions related to ratios and that is one of the best strategies to solve ratio related questions correct we'll again apply this here so we have a question here question number 22 you can pause the video answer this and then look into my suggestions